Hi, I'm Jason from the Physics Paragons, and today I'm going to be discussing color, flavor, spin, and how mass can be measured in electron volts, which is an energy unit. To understand particle physics, one should have a decent understanding of each of these properties. Let's begin by talking about color. Most of the time that a physicist will talk about color, he's talking about how it relates to the strong nuclear force. I gave a brief introduction to color when I talked about the strong nuclear force in my bosons video, but I'm going to get a little bit more in depth here. The formal name of the actual study of color in physics is quantum chromodynamics. In quantum chromodynamics, there are three types of colors that describe each particle, red, green, and blue. We also have to consider that particles can also have anticolors, anti-red or cyan, anti-green or magenta, and anti-blue or yellow. Let's observe an example of this by analyzing how a green quark interacts with a blue quark in a baryon with regards to quantum chromodynamics. First, we need to establish that this baryon will have three quarks, one red, one green, and one blue. The green quark will emit a green anti-blue gluon, making the quark blue. The green anti-blue gluon will then cancel the blue color of the blue quark and make it green. Note that during the time that the gluon is traveling between the quarks, they are the same color. A similar pattern will repeat in the baryon, except that it will use different colors and anticolors. One way that I find it easier to actually process the color change between different quarks is to analyze the names of the gluons interacting with each of the quarks. The name of the color that has the anti-prefix in the gluon name is what the quark that is emitting the gluon will become. In the example, it was a green anti-blue gluon, thus the quark that emitted that gluon will be blue. The quark that receives the gluon will be the regular color that's in the name of the gluon. Looking back at that same example, the green anti-blue gluon cancels the blue color of the quark, and the green color now becomes the new color of the quark. Flavor is the next type of property I will discuss. Physics really only uses flavor to describe the different types of quarks and leptons. Flavors are a really useful way for physicists to group together the different properties of subatomic particles. Different properties like magnetic spin, charge, or mass are taken into consideration with flavor. For quarks, the currently known flavors are as follows, up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. On the other hand, the lepton flavors are the electron, tau, muon, electron neutrino, tau neutrino, and muon neutrino. Along with each of these different particles, they all have their own respective antiparticles. For example, the up quark has an antiparticle of an anti-up quark. The antiparticle of each respective particle has its opposite charge. For example, since an up quark has a charge of plus two thirds, its anti quark has a charge of minus two thirds. Now on the spin. Magnetic spin is based upon the different intrinsic spins of other particles that compose a larger particle. The spin of a particle is really just a net magnetic moment that's determined by the spin of the particles that comprise it. If you may have guessed already, the magnetic moment of something like a proton is determined by the different spins of the subatomic particles that compose it. However, this isn't to say that something that is electrically neutral, like a neutron, doesn't have magnetic spin. The electric charge of something and its magnetic moment are two different things. Now to explain something in physics that I personally think is mind-blowing. Generally, in most early science classes, teachers try to teach mass and energy as if they were two very different things, but in reality, the two are actually very intimately tied together. To explain how mass is calculated using energy terms, we have to give a brief background on special relativity. You've probably heard of Einstein's staple special relativity equation of E equals mc squared, and it may seem breathtaking that the equation is actually pretty simple once you understand all of its variables. It reads out, the change in energy of a system is equal to its mass change times the speed of light squared. The first time that this concept is really introduced is in nuclear physics or nuclear chemistry. When mass is annihilated, energy is released. And typically, this amount of energy is very large because of the speed of light squared coefficient that's multiplied to the mass term in the general relativity equation. Scientists use the fact that energy and mass are connected to use an energy unit, the electron volt, to describe the masses of quarks. That's why, in the standard model of particle physics, each different particle is given a mass, usually in giga electron volts or mega electron volts. Thanks for watching this video about some of the terminology that physicists use to describe the properties of subatomic particles. Make sure to check out our other videos and tune into the Physics Paragons next time.